Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's Garden Ramblings, we're just going to do a full tour, talk about what's going on. Plants are growing pretty well, very well in some cases, okay in other cases, but that's a garden, so don't over worry about that. This is my raised bed. These are Vijega metal beds. If you're interested in that, check out the video description. The peppers in here are doing wonderfully well. Last year, I think I had 16 in there. That was too many. They got a disease. I think I cut it down to about 12. My point being is maybe you have to experiment a little bit with how many plants you put into a space, but shrinking down the number of bell peppers has really worked for this bed right here. And cayenne's in here doing really well. And just look at the peppers. And notice the leaves as we're going through. There's one way back there. There are no diseases on there. They're all nice and green. I haven't really been spraying my pepper leaves. Last year with too many plants, a fungus got in there. But this is the right combination of plants. A right number of plants, I should say. Just beautiful dark green growth, big leaves. I am making sure I get in and stake them up. There is more shade coming in here before I did remove some of the leaves. You do want the light getting in there. Any leaves that are staying in total darkness aren't doing a whole lot and they're just, you know, more of a place for bugs and disease to kind of get on. So I do want to thin out some of the leaves, how to cut the muscadines back. But overall, my sun tracks this way and these just get tons of sun. They're doing extremely well. Blueberries finally finished out. You know, I've been just kind of using a weed whacker, keeping this space under control, but you know, success over here. And next year, I'll have to do a lot of pruning. <laughs> these are supposed to be dwarf trees, but I'm gonna cut them back. Shishitos, doing well. This was a lot of cool weather stuff, all been removed, and the peppers are starting to take off. And just tons of shishitos. The onions are about to flop over. They're almost ready. And it's going to be delicious. Pick some shishitos, slice up some onions, grill them in olive oil. It's going to be delicious. The towers are doing well. I am falling behind a little bit on the watering, so some of the plants are suffering. And it's just because <laughs> I've decided my garden's too big. So I'm going to, you know, change it up a little bit next year, but you'll see videos on that. Peppers do extremely well in these vertical towers. This guy's suffering from me not watering it regularly, and you can see the leaves are floppy. The flesh is not looking good on the pepper. But this guy is getting more water, and it's, you know, producing nicely. So I'm going to take off a lot of the peppers. The damage here on all the strawberries was from watering issues, and I may just cut these leaves back, let them grow again. More peppers. Towers do really well growing all kinds of vegetables, but peppers for sure. Eggplant looks good. The flea beetles are still around. I just put some dust down. I need more. I ran out. And there's holes in there. I mean, the flea beetles are just relentless. However, the plants are growing nicely. I've got two eggplant forming and it's going to be good. I have, you know, helped those eggplant come along. Beautiful bell pepper right in there. Purple potted beans. They're beautiful. And this plant again sowed itself. It's only one plant and it's just massive. Not a lot of issues with the leaves, which I really like. Purple potted versus the green beans tend to be bothered less by spider mites and other problems. So this is a definite must grow every year in my garden. All right, let's walk over here. Some plants are doing really well. Other plants are struggling. That's okay. That's what gardening is about. Don't get too focused on the plants that, you know, need some help. Just see what you can learn and see if you can help them next time. But also balance it out. Like the tomatoes here are doing pretty good. I've actually took off all the tomatoes on the bottom. I had probably like 40 pounds of tomatoes. They were all cat-faced. You might have seen that video. I do have a blog now. I've actually basically started writing regu regularly in my old blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. If you want to check that out, I will be putting articles to go along with most of my videos. Sometimes, you know, in conjunction with that video with lots of details. Other times, just a supporting, you know, role. But the article will have recipes and all kinds of stuff that maybe you don't want to write down from listening to a video, so you can find it there. Here is a beautiful cherry type tomato. This is the apple. You know, these all have to be picked. So I'll be coming out today and picking all my cherry tomatoes and giving some of them away. They're doing really well. Harvesting time, 
really my tomatoes are delayed like by a good I think two weeks usually I have a lot more tomatoes peppers are pretty good they are getting a little bit beat up from the heat so you know I don't know if you can tell but the one right there is having issues with water for whatever reason I'm gonna give all my pepper plants a drink of water soluble fertilizer they're a little bit stressed a little bit beat up you know a little bit less on the plants that are greener a little bit more on the plants that are yellow but you can go ahead and give them nitrogen like I've I've talked about other people talk about don't over nitrogen your pepper plants at a certain stage they'll get too much leaf growth we're just giving them a shot of nitrogen get them greening up again and growing I have a long season left I want them to do really well and that's just loaded you know with peppers in there let me spin around I walked in a way that my shadow is showing which I don't normally like to do so we're just gonna ramble for a second so I can turn around this section was planted on 717 today I think is uh, five days later the 22nd these are all the beans that I planted for what you can plant in July and August and they've all sprouted and that's the point that I wanted to make that your warm crops are going to sprout really quickly and grow fast so you have plenty of time maybe to get in that next wave of bush beans or cucumbers or other plants that maybe are getting beat up you just don't have to look take a look at these and look at all those beautiful tomatoes right in there you just don't have to get stuck with trying to tend and care for a plant that's dying a lot of times it's best just to replant another look at the purple pot it looks great the jalapenos here it's just funny they're just not growing well so they're going to get some of the water soluble nitrogen they're not taking off i can see the different colors and kind of the green in here my second or third wave of sunflowers are looking good i'm going to be pulling out a lot of the beat up ones watermelon in there weeds in a mess cantaloupe is doing well and you can see them right down there they self seeded from last year I love the carrot type tomatoes but they just are notorious for having leaves that get beat up so again water soluble fertilizer help them green back up don't be afraid to feed your plants a little bit extra if you're in doubt there's nothing really wrong with using water soluble fertilizer especially nitrogen more often you just don't necessarily need to do it and it is you know possible again to have your plants overgrow the leaves and cause problems but you really have to work hard to do that wave whatever of my cucumbers more melons in there zucchini plant just one this year but I'm getting plenty of zucchini out of there or just one or two at a time so I've planted more and I've been able to really manage this plant well nothing seems to be showing up on it and it looks beautiful I want to show you the melons so these I thought were sugar babies um, and they're not they're the second um, variety which I forgot but they're much larger three plants in there taking over the space just put a spray on the leaves just in case the fungus are coming but look at that two beautiful melons there are more growing so this one let's just remove that this one just didn't pollinate right here that's what happens they'll start to form this one didn't so you just remove them but if they pollinate they continue to grow if they don't pollinate they end up looking you know something like this they grow for a bit you get hopeful and then they yellow and they brown out and there's probably other melons hidden in there the tomato plant here is a chef's green variety or chef's variety I think it's green um, but they come in chef's red green yellow orange red and even black but it's doing extremely well the plant that I'm having the most trouble with is the tomato plant here that I keep saying I'm going to move, remove but I don't taking care of it it's growing it's flowering we'll see what happens this is wave two of my cucumber plants I don't know if we can see them in here there's an insect right there um, I'm seeing leaf hoppers hop so leaf hoppers come in they chew the undersides of your cucumber leaves they can spread disease you get this pattern on there that cucumber that's from like partial pollination and heat issues sometimes they don't form right so I'm gonna spray again I've been spraying with the peppermint oil got behind a little bit but they're staying alive and I know that's what happens with my cucumber plants about now they all start getting beat up here are the sugar babies being grown up the side of the cattle panel have one right there 
one right there and you know, and they're looking pretty good here is zucchini number three from that video series on the 17th of this month and it's starting to come up so I will have two if the one that I just showed you has a problem I'll try and take care of it if it doesn't do well I'll remove it and I'll have another one coming up in this space super hot's doing well parsnips they take forever to grow but they're doing well they were planted in the spring beets are a great crop because it can sit in the heat the beet itself doesn't get woody the leaves get beat up more cucumbers second wave of bush beans starting to form basil's looking good now and here's the difference like this bean plant got beat up sprayed it when i spray it the leaves come back if i don't stay up on it then the leaves get beat up again so spraying differently works and i mean i don't want to pretend that i'm perfect with because I, I certainly am not with keeping up on spraying and everything i kind of teach but it works so you know stick with the routine and your plants can recover and the leaves can look something like this basil's doing pretty good i didn't put the shade cloth down on this side i've been taking the flower heads off of that letting the flower heads grow in here because i'm going to be doing a video on that with the heat you know you can see the sun coming down here the basil gets pretty strong tasting so if you can cover it up now you know mid july to mid august it still grows really well it just tastes a little bit sweeter let's try and get over here to the butternut squash and that's two plants all growing from right there and it's spread all the way across this way you know up through the top etc but i do have some nice butternuts forming one there one down there one down there and instead and then i don't know if you can see it but right back there is another one that's four and i'm sure there's a fifth in there last year i ended up with like 35 40. i had too many plants so i did cut back again and that's you know going back to the peppers trying to figure out the right amount of plants is really important because if you're just doing extra work to maintain something that you're not going to eat then you just you create more risks of you know disease and problems coming in when we get over to the potatoes on the outside of the garden you'll see that you know there's a whole bunch that i just didn't get to i didn't like how they looked coming out of the ground but i grew so many i didn't really have <laughs> you know, a place to store them, even with the stuff that I built, and not able to give them away. I think that's one of those problematic insects. I don't know what that is. Anybody know what that is? Let's see. It's got an orange band on its body, so that, I think I recall that being an issue. Sweet peppers, the banana peppers are doing really well, and I've been harvesting a lot out of here. Just used a lot of these for making a sauce. The space in here has been cleared out. I decided to leave those tomatoes till they ripened. So I got, you know, nice tomatoes right over there. The cucumber plant in here in just really a few days, this just happened, really got beat up. So that's gonna be one that I'm gonna yank out. Here are the cow peas from that series five days ago bunching onions they're not coming up yet all this has to get watered down it's really important it's been day three I should have watered these yesterday but it's really important you water all of your new seed starts just about every day if not every other day in your garden especially with the heat um, these dry out really quickly I forget what I was doing yesterday but totally forgot to come back tons of cantaloupe doing really well I'm excited about that had a rabbit get in here because I left the gates open so it's kind of cool my dog is starting to learn to stay out of the beds but I can let her in here and she'll run through she'll find a rabbit and chase it out the other way and the reason you know that I'm worried about that I don't worry too much when the plants are like this but all those beans that are sprouting up a rabbit in one night will chew them all down you just want to make sure you're protecting your plants all right let's go out here so the garden itself is in pretty good shape for the end of july that was my goal i have things planted that i want planted i've opened up space where i wanted to open up space the garden is producing oh let's go over to here i forgot this space this is my first really tomato plants 
and they're doing well. The leaves are beat up, that's okay. They're getting the water-soluble fertilizer. Um, I harvested all the tomatoes off the bottom. This guy's more beat up than I want. They were just sprayed a couple days ago. So I have the antifungals down. I gave them the hydrogen peroxide the other day. That's the gladiator. I mean, look at all those paste type tomatoes. So that's doing well. And then we can just kind of work our way down. They're all really healthy, but these nine plants are really technically enough tomatoes <laughs> for me and my, you know, and my wife. But they're doing well. Here's just another view of all those watermelons. I think that was wave one, two of the cucumber plants. That guy's faring better than some of the ones that are beat up over here. This is the first one, so I'll show you that too. So it looks like in 24 hours, 48 hours from when I noticed the leaf hoppers and the issues on the leaves, because the leaf hoppers are the insects and even fungus kind of feed on the underside of the leaf, they dry out really quick. So this whole section is gonna look really beat up. And they've been growing so much, you know, I'm ready just to start over. We're gonna go out to my other garden too, my smaller garden. I'm gonna show you some cucumbers in there. All right, but let's get back outside. This was actually wave two of sunflowers. Look how beautiful they are. So I planted all those in there. Cherry tomato that I did decide to leave. And then coming out here, it's not decoration for Halloween, but I've got two deer and a doe living in the woods. And last year they didn't really seem to bother my plants, but right in here, you know, it's hard to tell because they're starting to grow back. They're sticking their head in here and they're chewing down the plants. So all the way in into there. So they're not going in the inside, but they're brave enough now. The bells don't bother them. So this ag fabric, what I was using for my trees is a great way to protect them. If not, they come and chew them down and you can see the leaves are growing back pretty quickly. Over here, I didn't put the fabric down two days ago and they just came in and they chewed it down more. So once you have a problem, and deer are pretty easy to identify, if they come back once, they're gonna probably come back a couple days later, a couple days later until everything is really gone. And they kinda of test the water, they get comfortable and soon your garden becomes a buffet for them. Here are the uh, potatoes that I didn't move. They had lots of holes in them and they just didn't look great. So these all get composted. Had to do the same thing for the melons in here which are doing really well because a deer came in and you can't see it now well right in there are um, sweet potatoes they chewed those down they started chewing on the tips of the melons which is okay because I wanted to prune them back anyway so I'm keeping them covered and there's plenty of light that can get through here so your plants are going to suffer keeps them maybe a little bit cooler put some shade on there but I'm using it now as a way to kind of protect my plants from the deer because I'm on the outside of my garden. And let's just go down here real quick. I don't normally do cut-ins into ramblings, but I totally walked by this group of corn. So this was planted, this space was planted with corn on the 17th of July. So I want to encourage you, a lot of your summer crops can still be planted. If you're worried about frost dates, grow bush varieties or plant bush varieties of beans, uh, melons, cucumbers, even squash, or look for varieties that mature quickly. This corn uh, matures in 65 days. But I've got corn growing, which I planted, you know, the middle of July. You still have time to grow a lot of the warm season crops. So don't get discouraged. Just replace plants that are beat up. You know, maybe add in some other plants that that you're not used to planting in July or early August, maybe plants you just plant in May, and you'll be surprised at how well they do and how far they can go into the season in your area. Especially now, it seems like, at least in Maryland, I can plant longer into the season, longer into the fall. Just throwing a lot of stuff into here was mostly leaves and grass, you know, for the original series I did last year, but I needed more room. So all the garden debris is going in there, more leaves and grass will go on top, and that will just kind of finish up, I don't know, a year or two from now. But I have plenty of compost still, you know, in different places, so I'm not worried about it. 
you know, and it took me years to get to this point where I have more compost than I can use right away, but you just want to keep making it because I am very slowly, even though I find stuff on sale, organic granular fertilizer wise, I'm really weaning myself off of having to spend any money on uh, organic type fertilizers. You know, you always need a water soluble, but otherwise if you can make compost, make compost. So this is my other garden. And the difference in here is this garden gets, I don't know, six to eight hours of sunlight. My main garden gets easily eight, 10, if not more. And the plants grow a little bit differently. Here's the fourth wave of cucumbers out here. So that's going to replace a lot of what you saw out there that's getting beat up. And I will put in more cucumbers. The tomato plants do okay in here, except they're kind of spindly and weak because I think they need more sunlight. These guys have not been sprayed because I forgot about them. And look, the leaves just don't look so good. But it's also because I forget to water the plants out here. Green beans do okay. Peppers are growing nicely, but they're kind of spindly too. So they really do benefit from that eight plus hours of sun, if not 10. What does the best in here are really the eggplant and they need to be dusted too. But there's an, two eggplants on there. This plant is much bigger than the ones that were struggling in my other garden. There's one right down there. They seem to do okay with, you know, just under eight hours of sun. They get a little bit more here because they're in the left part of the garden here. So maybe they get the full eight hours, but they don't need more. And more tends to beat them up a little bit, but they do really, really well in there spin back around this way and walk out. So I do have the Rusted Garden Journal up and going now. And again, that will be a place where I write in, um, or where I write obviously, but I'll put in recipes and different things I talk about so that you can find them all in one place. At some point, I will have that PDF set up um, and then you can download it for like dealing with pests and diseases, but I only have so much time and some stuff gets bumped away. So, thanks so much for watching. Don't be discouraged if some plants are doing well, some plants are doing poorly. That just happens. You gotta give yourself time to learn how to grow and manage everything. Any plants that are, like we've been saying for months now, that are beat up and struggling, try and save them. But if you can't, just go ahead and replace them. I still have plenty of time. I think it's like the 21st or 22nd of July to replant a lot of the warm weather crops. I'm gonna be doing that just get in my final round. And I'm starting to think about the cool crop garden, which I'll be talking about over the next couple of weeks. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. I'll put a link in the video description. Thanks for watching.